Good morning, fellas, and welcome to Retro Vault here on the Spoiler Alert Network. Today we got our first episode of Retro Vault for T-SAN Season 4. I'm Showtime, and today we're going to be playing Need for Speed Underground. This game had a lot of great things to do. It had circuit races, sprint races, drag races, drift races, lap knockouts, free run. The free run wasn't really like free roam or anything. You could just drive around tracks and practice. But today we're going to start off doing a little drift race. We're going to start off here with my favorite car, the 240SX. Of course, they had other great cars in this game. We're not going to go through all of them, but it had like gems like this, the Golf, the Civic, Pugot, Mazda Miata, MX-5, Dodge Neon. I remember my mom had a Dodge Neon right at the time when this game came out. Mitsubishi Eclipse, Toyota Celica, Mazda RX-7, Mitsubishi Lancer, Ford Focus, Subaru Impreza, Hyundai Tiburon, Nissan Sentra, and then the Nissan 240SX. There's like a dozen more cars, but we're just going to leave it there, the 240SX. I've already customized this car the way I like it. And the, the customization options in this game, they were pretty advanced at the time. Like you could choose your different bumpers, your front bumper, your back bumper, your side skirts, your spoiler, your hood scoop, your roof scoop, different rims, different accessories like neon, your muffler tip, window tinting. Then you could paint everything. Paint the base of the car, the rims of the car, the spoiler, the engine accents. What kind of game had this kind of personalization back in the day? Brake calipers, muffler tips, decals, and vinyl. I like the simple window decals. I'm not a big fan of vinyl. Then all the performance options, you choose different kits based on different manufacturers from the time. Like different nitrous options, you could pick NOS versus uh, what other, whatever other nitrous provider they have, and just other racing performance parts, manufacturing. I'm gonna shut up, I don't know what I'm talking about. All right, so let's jump into this race. I put in the uh, cheat codes, obviously, to go ahead and unlock all the drift tracks, and all the sprint tracks, all the tracks, so I don't have to worry about unlocking anything. I can just jump in and play it whenever I want. All right. It's been a while since I played this. I might not be very good at it. I remember playing this a lot when I was a kid. I wasn't amazing at it, but I really enjoyed myself. Me and my grandpa used to bond a lot playing games like this. And then, uh, we jumped into Need for Speed Most Wanted after we got done here with Underground. We never really played Underground 2. I played it with my cousin a couple times, but I didn't really get into it. I really preferred the style of Need for Speed Underground 1. Underground 2 added in the, the free world where you can drive in between the different races and drive in between the different um, garages to find the different performance parts. The Need for Speed 1 was just a little bit simpler, where it was all in the menus. And then Need for Speed Most Wanted just took it to another level. And within the free roam and the open world, you have police chases and police challenges. And it just got crazy. Which Need for Speed Most Wanted is probably the one I played the most. But Underground was definitely my favorite. And I had forgotten that the soundtrack for this game 
does not play during races. It only plays during the menus, which is strange to me because I remember the soundtrack being like the biggest thing about this game. It directly influenced a lot of my own musical choices throughout my younger years and even now. Like Need for Speed Underground was the first time I heard a TI and I still love TI to this day. I like Lil John. I will always associate uh, Lil John's Get Low with this game. Anytime I hear it, I think about the main menu of this game. So I feel like that was always the, the first song that would play every time I jumped into a game. I'm not doing too hot. I'm only like eight or 9,000 points ahead of the competition here. If you guys are paying attention to the scoreboard over there on the right side. Oh, that'll help and make a bit of a difference. And the key on these drift races was always to keep it high speed, try to stay tight to the wall without actually hitting the wall, using the handbrake at the right moments. Try to fishtail and combo up as much as you can. But don't get too greedy and ram yourself into a wall trying to get too many points racked up. And there we go, that's the end of the race. Night Dog on the soundtrack. So I actually won only by about 5,000 points. That's awfully close. Unlocking different vinyls. So we're going to leave this race and we're going to go jump into an actual circuit race now. Although I did love this game, I was uh, I was more interested in the specialty race types. I really liked the drifting and the drag races. I wasn't very big on the sprint races or the circuit races, time trials, any of that. Lap knockout was always my least favorite. It always felt so stressful just to make sure you weren't in the last place at the end of a, of a lap. So anytime you're in last place during lap knockout, then you get eliminated at the end of that lap. Oh boy. Here we go. My muscle memory is gonna kick in at some point. I'm gonna remember this track, but right now, everything about this just looks unreal. I don't remember any of this. I'm just gonna smash off of every wall I see. I remember this little shortcut here. This game was weird, like, it wouldn't really, uh, the, the shortcuts weren't guaranteed to be shortcuts, because you could have a situation where you're cruising along, right along and then you see a shortcut, oh, I forgot about cars. You could take a shortcut, but it could end up hurting you more than helping you because the shortcuts weren't guaranteed to put you ahead. They're kind of difficult to navigate through sometimes. It wasn't like guaranteed win just by taking the shortcuts. And I actually forgot that there was traffic in this game too. Of course I should have remembered, but oh well drafting behind the other racers. This game is intense. Why did I ever grow up and stop playing this? I feel like I just wasted all my nitros there. I'll catch him. Or maybe I won't, I don't know. I can't expect to come back into this game 15 years later and just win every race I'm in. Ooh, that was close. Oh no! Well, he's like, yeah, he finished. He's over four seconds ahead of me. That's okay. We'll race again. We'll do one more race. Try to keep this video about 15 minutes. We'll choose a different track this time.
a Pity Pablo on the soundtrack too. There's T.I. This was my jam when I was a kid. 24 is by T.I. Those are the reverse tracks, like mirror tracks in uh, Mario Kart. We're gonna try this terminal track and see what it's about. Hoping to win this race, just for my own ego's sake. Gonna draft behind this guy, get some speed built up, cut down that wind resistance. Of course, I'm not close enough to draft. Just smash into every wall. And this game was nice because, like, the it didn't matter how much you crashed. It didn't cost you anything to fix up your car. Your car was just automatically fine by the next race. It wasn't like the games, like, uh, that's a car. Whoa, flying through the air now. Okay. I guess I'm going to come out of this all right. Maybe not. Oh yeah, there it is. This game wasn't like, uh, juiced. I don't know if you guys remember that one. Not a whole lot of people play that one, but that was a, uh, a street racing game where every time, uh, every time you crashed your car, you had to pay for the repairs. So like one of your goals was to make it through the race without doing very much damage. Otherwise, any money you made during the race would just go towards repairing your car. It's like you didn't really make any profit. Juice wasn't a very good game anyway, but... Oh no. I guess I still remember it all these years later, so... Something worth talking about. I don't think any of the other Need for Speed games had that feature where you had to pay for repairs on your car. Maybe... Some of the later games, like Need for Speed Pro Street, maybe, I think you had to pay for repairs. But that wasn't so much of street racing. Pro Street had a lot of track racing, like Forza. Which I never really got into Forza, because I prefer street racing, like I said. Like Forza and Gran Turismo never really appeared appealed to me. I'm way behind, there's no way I'm catching up and I'm just gonna keep smashing into walls. Okay, I'm just gonna hit everything. Waste all my nitrous like that. Five seconds behind if you look at the little scoreboard up there on the top right. There's no way I'm gonna win. Absolutely no way. And I'm only on medium difficulty. I promise, I really used to be pretty good at this game. Before I took a 15 year hiatus. And even any racing game, I haven't really played any racing game at all since... Need for Speed Most Wanted, probably. But that's gonna wrap it up for our video today. I already embarrassed myself twice. I guess I'll stick to the drift races from now on. We'll catch you guys back here next week with another video from the Spoiler Alert Network on T-San Tuesday. Hashtag stay tuned and hashtag stay dedicated.